everyone. My name is Sophia Clark. I hope you're enjoying Unite so far. Is everyone having a good time? Mm. <laughs> um, yes, I'm Sophia Clark, and I'm a developer relations engineer at Unity. I provide technical support for support for Cloud Build and Collaborate, and occasionally other services such as ads and analytics. Before Unity, I was a software engineer at a company called Reloaded Productions, so I'm very familiar with the stress of a live production environment and all the tasks that come alongside it. Being a developer relations engineer means I speak to developers ranging from indies working out of their bedroom to big studios like Disney and Rovio. My talk today is called Streamlining Game Development with Unity Teams. You may have heard a bit about Unity Teams in the keynote yesterday. Did everyone watch the keynote? Yeah? Right at the beginning, they spoke about Unity Teams, so I'm going to expand upon that. You may be new to game development, or you may be a veteran who is looking to learn something new or to make your life a bit easier. Either way, I am here to help you out. Today, as I said, I'm going to cover Unity Teams, which includes Collaborate and Cloud Build. I'll also touch upon performance reporting. I'm going to go into more detail about each of these, and I'll be giving you practical examples how, of how they work together to make your life easier. Using my position as developer relations engineer, I've been able to speak to a variety of studios and find out how much they like using these services and their specific use cases and how they really get value out of them. So you'll be hearing a bit from them as well. And this talk is code free, so nothing to fear there. We are starting at the very beginning. You've got a game idea. You've developed it enough that you're ready to start putting down design documents. You've got sketches done. And this is a really exciting time. We've all been there. You're just so excited to start your game development. Maybe it's just you and a friend. Maybe you're part of a larger studio. Either way, imagine you have some remote workers in this scenario. You've got artists, you've got coders, composers, and you're all over the place. Up until now, this could have been a nightmare. Maybe you had to deal with setting up a file transfer protocol, but your artists want to drop their work in an online storage, and your coders have all been trained in Perforce. Maybe you were even mailed a disk at some point. I'm not sure, but it sounds really messy. In comes Unity Collaborate, which as of 2017.1, it is out of beta. If you don't know what Unity Collaborate is, it's in editor source control, and it has built-in scene merging. I'm sure this is a very familiar sight to all of you the blank editor. You've got nothing set up, nothing turned on. It can be really intimidating, but that's probably another topic for another talk. Before I go much further, let me just mention that I am using screenshots for this talk. It's my first Unite talk, and it's difficult enough remembering to breathe correctly without worrying about Wi-Fi in the venue, so hope you don't mind about that. Anyway, let's turn on Collaborate. It's super simple. It's just one toggle. Maybe if you were setting up Git right now, you'd be in the terminal while on the phone to one of your teammates who doesn't really understand SSH keys, and they've never used source control before. And so you're trying to explain how all of that works while getting confused what you even know. If you're using a different kind of source control, maybe you're setting up an expensive build machine and configuring workspaces and all of the work that goes along with maintaining a build engineering workflow. Well, with Collaborate, it's much quicker and easier. Your initial commit is done. You have a repository. There's nothing in it yet. So let me open up a project that's a bit nicer to look at than this blank skybox. Nothing against it, but you know. This is better. This is the adventure game tutorial made by my lovely friends in the content team at Brighton. Imagine this is something you've made in this scenario. Although in reality, it would probably be a white box level with some cubes moving around. But for the sake of this, this is what you've made so far. All the blue boxes you can see in the project window are files and folders that haven't yet been published. But before I do anything else with Collaborate, I'm going to stop and I'm going to talk about Cloud Build. You may have seen this comic before. And if you're a programmer, you've probably had a little giggle at it. I'm not going to assume that everyone here knows what Cloud Build is, so let me explain. You can build your game without having to use your computer. If you're a programmer, again, you've seen this image. You've maybe, you've maybe like used it as an excuse to not be at your desk, but you've, you've felt the pain of not being able to use your computer because your code's compiling, your game's building. And well, it's a, it's a pain, even though you get to play with foam swords. 
So you might have done this in the past, but now your life can be more like, I can queue and install an Android build while in the restroom using Unity Cloud Build. The future is now. <laughs> what a time to be alive. Cloud Build has streamlined the development process for so many studios. This quote comes from Lizzie at Furious Bee. When I start a new Unity project, Cloud Build is one of the first things I set up. Furious B is a team of two people, Lizzie and Ross. Lizzie's the technical director. They work on their own projects, but they also do a lot of outsource work. They recently worked on the port for Her Story, a game by Sam Barlow, which has won multiple awards, including three BAFTAs. Sam Barlow is based in Brooklyn, New York, and the Furious B team are based in Sheffield. He thought he was just hiring us to do the Android version, but CloudBuild allowed us to streamline his process for all the other platforms as well. So CloudBuild enabled Furious B to send builds to Sam with zero hassle. Lizzie and her team were also able to show Sam how to use CloudBuild for future platforms, such as Linux or whatever you want to build. We'll go into more detail later. CloudBuild is, is compatible with most external source controls you may use. But here it's detected that I'm using Collaborate, so we'll be using that. You can see that some of the steps on the blue line have already been completed. Let's just stick with Mac as a target platform for now. As you can see, auto build is automatically ticked. That means when I publish my changes to Collaborate, Cloud will start building automatically. If you're setting up iOS or Android, you'll need your credentials for these platforms, but you'll be guided through the process. It's not scary at all. All of this can also be done through the web dashboard, but I'm using the editor today. And it's right there in the editor. That's it queued up. I didn't need to do anything. I just committed. I can also see that building in the dashboard may even keep, it will keep track of the live build log if I want to. And after five minutes, it failed. This would really be embarrassing. Like when I was making the talk, I genuinely had a moment of, no, it wasn't meant to be that way. <laughs> but it's a really good opportunity to tell you how cool Cloud Build is. I didn't cause this error on purpose, as I just said. It's a genuine error. And I read the email on my phone, and I saw the error straight away. You can probably imagine why this is so useful in the development process. Here's a quote from Mike Tucker at Bitmap Bureau talking about how it was useful while they were making their game 88 Heroes. Cloud Build has been a useful immediate insight into whether we've made a breaking change. And they added, within a few minutes of someone making a code change, we've seen the impact. And it's true. Honestly, I left my build running, and I went to lunch, and then I got the email about my build failing. I immediately knew what the problem was because the build log was in the email. I wasn't sitting at my desk stressing over it and listening to the fans whir away while I can't use anything else. I was outside eating a sandwich. So let's actually publish to collaborate since I started it and didn't go into much detail. There's around 450 files, as I said earlier, screenshots, but it did actually go quite fast, and it depends on your internet connection. It's all uploaded. Cloud Build will trigger a new build, a new build when the commit ID is different from the previous commit ID, which essentially means that whenever you make a change, a new build will start. Cloud Build, of course, automatically started a build for me. And it succeeded this time, which was really nice. It took around nine minutes, and the game even has an icon now. You can download the build directly from the dashboard, or you can generate a share link and send it to whoever you like. You can download this one if you want. This is a real live link. It's a Mac build. Um, it's just the adventure game tutorial, which you can also get from the asset store. But hey, if you want this one, have this one. I was recently speaking to GlitchNap, a studio based in Copenhagen. They've worked on their own indie games and commissions from external companies, like publishers such as Cartoon Network. Jonathan told me that when they work with external clients, Cloud Build makes it so easy for them to send builds and keep them updated. The quote reads, we either give them access to Cloud Build or send them download links. Worked like a charm. I didn't tell him to say that. He genuinely said that. It was great. <laughs> Maybe the person you're sending to doesn't want the build on their phone for whatever reason. Maybe it's security reasons or simply a lack of test devices. With Cloud Build, you're able to build for WebGL and play it straight away in the dashboard. So you've got your initial build done, and you're ready to start inviting your teammates. So you can see what they've all been working on while you've been setting up this project. You can see here that I've added a teammate, and you can choose which levels of permission to give them. He downloaded the project, made some changes, and now I have the option to update. The commit message reads, added more characters and changed fog color. 
So I'm sure we've all seen this dialog box before, which pre-collaborate, it would have been a really scary sight. Who knows what's going to happen when you press reload? But it merged automatically. <laughs> Smart merge is built into collaborate, so you never need to worry about scene merging again. So I think a really great example of why this is so useful comes from the Studio Tuesday quest. Collaborate and Cloud Build have really helped us to stick in our roles and not have to bother each other with our issues. So this quote maybe sounds slightly harsh, but Vincent told me that before, they were, before Collaborate, he would be standing behind his coder micromanaging with a list of things he needed to do, or behind his artist telling her exactly where to place a particle effect. In a small team, this can be a huge time sink. Now they can all work within Collaborate, and their scenes will merge automatically. There's that word again. If Vincent doesn't like the exact position of a particle effect, he can change it himself. This is another studio using Collaborate, 22. They're a French studio, and they're working on a game called Dwinglebot. On a commencé avec Twingle, un jeu en réalité virtuelle épisodique où on se retrouve à huis clos avec un petit robot dans une pièce remplie d'énigmes. Ça impliquait des compétences différentes, des systèmes différents et des lieux différents, comme des salles de démonstration. Depuis, on utilise Unity Collaborate dans tous nos projets, que ce soit des applications natives pour le broadcast, des serious games ou même des applications collaboratives pour de la formation en réalité virtuelle. On crée un projet, on active Collaborate, on invite toutes les personnes nécessaires et on travaille déjà tous ensemble. La mise en place est très rapide. Chacun travaille sur sa partie sans impacter les autres. Il suffit de mettre à jour son contenu pour envoyer ou les recevoir. Il suffit juste d'appuyer sur un bouton. Thanks 22 for making that video for us. You may have noticed during that that they were prefacing their commit messages with tags such as update and add. I really enjoy it when someone is that organized. Let me explain why that is so useful. You can view the collaborate history within the editor and see the builds next to the corresponding commit. So maybe a message says update. You know exactly which download to check, so you can check that that update works correctly. I find it's a really great way to look back on your project and see what you've achieved. I'm a person who really appreciates a project post-mortem. So using Collaborate and Cloud Build together, you have such detailed information available to you. For example, maybe you've got a commit message that reads alpha, and you're, you're at the end of the road now. You just want to look back and see what you've done. You can download the corresponding build to that alpha commit and see exactly how far you've come. So of course, it's not just commits by me that trigger builds. Any time one of your teammates publishes to collaborate, a build will start. But maybe you have an artist working on Mac and you're on Windows. What if they want to check how their models look without you setting up a whole Mac build system? Here's another quote from GlitchNap. I'm going to read out the full quote, not just what's on the screen. Graphics and sound people who aren't part of the core team and often are remote will need to get their builds. Some of them won't be able to use their phones or prefer to run stuff on a desktop. So we have to maintain a variety of platforms. At some point for Invert, we had pretty much every possible cloud build target running. And whenever we hit a milestone, we would build all of them and send the links to our sound artists. So even though they don't actually support a lot of these platforms for the game, they made sure they worked well enough so they could play test them and for their artists to check their work. Cloud Build streamlined that process for them. It's really easy to build for multiple targets. I can build concurrently as well. This can also be set up from the dashboard, but I've done it here in the editor. Here I've got WebGL, Linux, Windows, and Mac all building concurrently. This is definitely not something I would ever have thought of doing before Cloud Build and Collaborate, especially not at the same time. I'm going to touch briefly upon performance reporting now. Unity performance reporting automatically collects the application errors across devices and platforms so teams can find and address issues in real time, which is good. One of your teammates has told you about a crash, and they have no idea how to give you any sort of information, helpful information about it. We've all been there at some point, right? You're, just, you're playing the game and it crashes, and you swear that you didn't touch anything broken. Or maybe you just didn't touch anything. It's broken now. This sentence is a mouthful. Bear with me. 
Reports in the performance reporting dashboard show the native stack trace of the crashed thread. There we go. If the crash is caused by an uncaught managed exception, the reports also show the managed stack trace of where the exception originates from, along with the native stack trace. This all means that you don't need to sit and explain to someone how they can send you their crash dump. It's all right there in your dashboard. OK, the crash has been dealt with. We're back in development mode now. Let's talk about webhooks for Cloud Build. So you've been hearing about the crashes and from your teammates and testers. People have been making new builds, and it could potentially get really messy. There has to be a better way for you to keep track of all of this. Webhooks are event callbacks from Unity Cloud Build to user-defined HTTP endpoints. And you can use Slack webhooks to receive event callbacks from Cloud Build in a specific channel. I'm going to talk about Slack for a little bit here because it works really well. Even if you don't want to add external workers to your company Slack, you can add them as a Slack guest, for example, and allow them only into a specific cha channel. Let's say it's called Builds. The channel gets a notification, and whenever there is a new build, anyone can jump on and grab the link. The links are posted in the webhook notification. And maybe they can use that channel to post their findings as well. Slack webhooks are really simple to set up. So if you click Add to Slack, you need to log into your Slack team, and you'll be brought to this page. You can customize it however you like, but I left everything on. I made a Slack channel especially for this purpose, and so I'm not concerned about it getting busy with build notifications. And it's done. It's really easy, I told you. <laughs> this is it working in a Slack channel. You can make use of Slack threads if you wanted to, to leave comments on a specific build. It's your project. You, you can do whatever you like to make it easier for you. The Slack notification con contains the share link, as I said, which is useful because maybe someone's checking their phone and they want to download it right there and then. Well, they can. They can start testing right away. You're getting to the end of your dev cycle now. This is the point where there's lots of small iterative changes and polishes added. You go from dev to test to build to test to build. <laughs> it's all over the place sometimes. But let's imagine it's dev, build, test. Dev. By this point in today's talk, I hope you can see how much easier this process is streamlined with Unity Teams. So I'm going to talk about some features that are coming soon to 2017.1. One feature I'm particularly excited to talk about is push to store. If you watched the Unity GDC keynote back in February, you may remember that our partnership with Xiaomi was announced. Once your game is ready to go live, you can use Push to Store to upload directly to the Xiaomi store, with more stores soon to follow. I won't go into a huge amount of detail right now, but come find us at the booths for more information. Or if you're watching online, you can go to unity.mi.com. Another new feature I want to talk about today is Build Upload. If you've made a local build, but you still want to share that particular build with your teammates, you can. You can upload it straight to the dashboard. And then you can share the local build. You can upload to the stores from there. The features I've spoken about today will be coming under the umbrella of Unity Teams. Working with teammates and creating together is such an important part of the game development process. And we wanted to make it easier and faster for you to host and share your work with a plan that is tailored to your team. All of these features will continue to be free until October 2017. And you can come find us at the booth if you have more questions about your specific organizations and how they'll be affected. You can also visit unity3d.com forward slash teams for the new price plans. If you don't already use the services I spoke about today, I hope you decide to give them a try. If you have any technical questions, I'm going to be at Ask the Experts after this. So come to me. Maybe you've got a build that's failing and you're not sure why, or you want to know some more things about your workflow. Come talk to me. I will be happy to answer any of your questions. If it's a business or organizational question, head over to the services booths in the main expo hall, and we can give you some notes about that and show you some demos of new features. Thank you for listening today.